All right, Algebra 2, today we're going to be learning synthetic division. Um, one thing I want to make clear about uh, what you're doing and why is we're doing factoring, basically. Uh, you don't have to write this down. This is just part of the main lecture, so just pay attention. This is one of those things that like, I, I really want you all to understand. We have watered down algebra so much due to like COVID and whatever else that it's hard to get the actual full information to you all that you need. So I'm going to go ahead right now and take you to Desmos, and I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you x squared, let's say plus, I don't know, not plus, minus, no, I'll do plus, plus 4x minus 10. Let's see, is that the number I want? Let me put one in there. 9, is that better? No. Is 8 better? No. Is 7 better? No. Sorry, y'all. Trying to make perfect numbers. 5. There it is. That works. Okay. So check it out. So I've made perfect numbers right here. What am I trying to show you? You know how we have this right here? And if I said to y'all, hey, do the ABCs on this, do the ABCs on this, what you would end up with is X plus five next to uh, X minus one. Check it out. I'm going to take out the blue again. Boom, 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 boom. Why am I showing you this? This is the stuff we don't get to play with very much anymore in Algebra 2 because of, like I said, we're watering down the standards a lot. So for those who are going into higher math, I want you to see this. Here's what's amazing about factors, if it can factor. You ready? So there's what it started as. Here's what we have. Look what we got right here. Do you see those things? Check it out. You see the relationship? When I find my x plus 5, look at right there. These factors represent where it crosses over the x-axis. That's what these factors are for. So when you're doing these crazy polynomials, you're basically finding out where the zeros are. These are called zeros, where they cross the x-axis. We just have not done enough graph work in this class. And um, that's just because of watered down standards, y'all. But I want you to see this. So can you see how, essentially, this one, if you applied the ABCs, you could break it into this thing, and if you graphed it, bam, that's what we're dealing with. So this method that we're dealing with here, you see this crazy thing right here? I'm not going to go on these steps. It's called synthetic division. And what ends up happening is I'm going to show you how to do it. All of the uh, steps are here, but I know how it, reading this and teaching yourself is kind of hard. All the steps are there, but this is what, um, what this is doing is if you end up with a remainder zero on this stuff or like in the division thing, what that means is when it's a factor, it means, hey, that's where it crosses the x-axis. That's where it crosses the x-axis. That's why when it's all said and done, you get x equals, let's say, like negative 5 or something. And that's like what I'm trying to get across to y'all. So that's just my quick lecture. Um, you can go ahead and like now kind of ignore this front page. You can use this front page as a reference sheet whenever you're uh, done learning this stuff. So I'm going to go to example one right now. Uh, so if we were going to do long division, which by the way, long division will also still work on these problems. If you were going to do long division, you'd be setting it up like this. You'd basically be setting it up like this. Uh, and again, don't write this down yet. I'll tell you when to start writing. Um, one second, my pad is not plugged in. Hold up. Okay, so if we were going to do long division, and again, don't write this down. I know I'm repeating myself. It's because I had my things unplugged. It would look like this. We would be writing x plus 3, putting into all of this stuff, right? And again, don't write this down, blah, blah, blah. I'm just showing you what you already know theoretically, and you'd be doing it this way. And guess what? This method, this uh, long division, it works every time. Synthetic division, of course, does not work every time. I'm not a huge fan of synthetic division at all. Um, so, and it's because it doesn't work all the time. Um, this is long division. So now you know this is what long division looks like. Now I'm going to switch colors, and I'm going to talk about synthetic division. This is what synthetic division looks like. Let's see if you can clock what I'm doing here. The only way synthetic division works is if you're dividing by, like, say this, like an x plus 3, an x minus 4, an x minus 2, an x plus 1. If you had something like 2x plus 3, you have to use long division. You can't use this. You can't do this. You can only do it if there is just an x. If there's just an x by itself in these little areas, then you can use synthetic division. If it's like 2x or 3x or 4x, you cannot use synthetic division. So. Now I'm going to go ahead and set up synthetic division. Let's see if you can clock what I'm doing on your own. First, we've got to make sure, if I start at the cubed, I'm going to make sure I have a square. There it is. I'm going to make sure I have a regular x to the 1. There it is. And in this case, a number as well, too. So here we go. See if you can see it. All right, I'm going to look here. There's that. Now I'm going to draw this weird little thing here. Do, 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 do. That one right there. 
and you kind of want to save enough space for this stuff to basically uh, have two rows of numbers. So there's my negative three. See the relationship there. What do you think I did here? I'm going to pull down this two. All right, this column must represent my x cubed right now. This column is going to represent my squares. This column is going to represent my x's. And this column is going to represent my numbers. Again, synthetic division. This is kind of just a upside down world version of doing division. So when you get to this place, here's where it gets kind of fun. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to bring this two all the way down. That's what you're going to do. And then I'm going to place it right here. OK, here comes the convoluted stuff. Are you ready? Remember before how we were multiplying and dividing and subtracting and whatever else? Of course, it's different steps here. Here we go. This two comes down, and now I say two times negative three, and that gives me negative six. And I'm gonna place it right there. And what ends up happening with two times negative three and negative six, we don't have to change signs anymore. Since we changed the sign here this one time, we no longer have to worry about changing signs anymore. We're just adding. So we kind of took care of that whole changing the sign over and over thing right here when we did this. So two times negative three is negative six. Now you just combine them together. So three plus negative six gives you negative three. All right, and then we go ahead and take this negative three. Uh, let's see right here, negative three times negative three. Sorry, that was a weird audio pause. I had to pause real quick. Uh, so negative three times negative three is a nine. Don't be like me and put negative nine and then have to restart the problem. Uh, negative four plus nine is five. Five times negative three is negative 15 and then check it out. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. This is a remainder zero. If you get a remainder zero here, it's the same thing as in long division. That means, yes, this is a factor. It means, yes, this is a factor. And what does that mean? What does that mean? It means that if I set this x plus three equal to zero, all right, y'all know this is, and I then solved it, I would get x equals minus three. That means that this whole polynomial business right here should be crossing over at negative three. So I'm gonna go open up my stuff right here and check it out. Let me move this out. So this is what this polynomial actually looks like. And by the way, in pre-cal, you learn how to graph these by hand. Like, it's kind of cool. But let's see. So I should have something at negative 3. Boom, right there. Negative 3 comma 0. Uh, yep, this is a factor right here. So that's awesome. So what did I do when it's finally all said and done? Here comes my factoring. Are you ready? So my first factor is going to be x plus 3. So my first factor is x plus 3. I'm going to write that down for part of my answer because we have this remainder 0. And then I'm going to write this down. Now, we have to be careful on this because it's very easy to get this wrong. Are you ready on how this works? So you have to work backwards. This is the remainders column. This is the numbers column. This is the x, uh, what's it called, 2 column. And this is the, not x2, sorry. This is the remainder, numbers, x1, x2. You have to work backwards. It's kind of weird that we start with the x3 here and it ends up being a different column, but just watch how we put it together. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. So I have a 2x squared. And remember, it's pretty much should be one less than the main one. You'll see that in uh, long division two. Negative 3x, and then I have plus 5. And then I have plus 5. So that becomes my entire answer right there. And if you wanted to factor this even more, you could ABCs this one down here if it works. You could quadratic formula this one right here if it works. You could break them down into its, its little components. Regardless, um, that's how synthetic division works. Again, it's not my favorite because it's a special case scenario and doesn't work in everything. So I'm not going to spend more time on this. I think you can rewatch example two over and over and get a gist for how to do this. It's the same thing. The one thing I am going to make an exception on is, and I'm going to solve uh, example five in the next video. Good luck, y'all.